Sabaha everybody, welcome back to the channel. And actually maybe aloha is more appropriate here since we're still on the big island here in Hawaii. There was a lot of things announced. Obviously we talked about mobile with the 8 Gen 1. Uh, we're talking about the G3X as well as the HCX. So there's an advancement in all of their uh, compute power processors. But Qualcomm announced a whole bunch of things going on and I got my chance to get some hands on with a lot of their tech. So today, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about some of the major things that I felt were or are, are gonna be a big thing in 2022, especially if you're a fan of Qualcomm and what they represent in the mobile space. This is TK, let's go ahead and talk about some of the best features of this tech summit. So the announcements this week were broken up into three different sections. We had the 8 Gen 1 for mobile computing, so this is going to be flagship for SOCs for end of 21 and 2022 for most of the major manufacturers in the world. Uh, and the biggest thing obviously around there is that obviously some improvements, a 4 nanometer architecture, uh, the obviously the uh, Cortex or basically the Cortex X2 architecture, uh, up to 16 gigabytes of RAM with LPDDR5, uh, triple ISP uh, capabilities at 18 bit with the ability of recording out of all three camera sensors on the back. So basically the, the configurations or the capabilities of the cameras are definitely going to see a big bump in the, well with the 8 Gen 1 over some of the previous generations. We're still running a triple ISP configuration but definitely better capabilities. Um, as I showed you guys with some of the other things, I've been posting on, online about a lot of the capabilities. The main thing that I loved about that is the fact of, again, the improvements that we're seeing, but also the ability of actually seeing that they're focusing on reduced power consumption, which could help us produce uh, the ability of basically getting that warm up that we get with most 888 devices that we've seen in 2021. So that's the area there. I haven't had a chance to benchmark those yet. As I'm recording this A-roll, my benchmark session is going to be later in the afternoon, and that'll be part of that video. So uh, anything I may say in that video will more than likely, you know, just override what I'm saying now. But the benefit here is definitely very focused and very good experience in some of the things that they've given us here. Uh, they showcase the camera capabilities on multiple areas. So we have video bokeh, we have motion blur. Uh, we also have the ability of using the ultra wide as well as 8K HDR recording. So those are some of the capabilities. And then the 8 Gen 1's bringing in 2K at 144 hertz as well as 4K at 60 frames per second displays. Now I realize some of us will say, well, okay, Sony has a 4K 120. That's mostly done on the panel side and there's different things leveraging the technology that Sony's putting in with the Xperia 1 series. Uh, that's one thing to again, keep in mind there. But now we're gonna see more devices being able to support it based on what Qualcomm's able to provide out of the 8 Gen 1. So that kind of like a very quick summary of what they're providing there. Please make sure to check out the video for the benchmarking and gaming because you'll be able to get way more information out of that. Switching it over to the, the, the G3X, let's jump onto the second one because that was my second favorite thing. That takes everything I loved about what I saw with the, um, eight, well, the 8 Gen 1 and then put it in an actual form factor that I feel like we still don't have. Now, Steam Deck's coming up later on. Obviously, that's going to be more of a small mini PC in your hand. And then, of course, we have the ability of seeing this it's Switch and some of the other gaming uh, capabilities on the market. Smartphones are great gaming uh, devices that you can play with, and the 8 Series or the 8 Gen 1 will definitely do a great job there. But we haven't had dedicated hardware made from a company, or at least an SoC made for a com from a company that focuses on gaming and improving the gaming experience. Meaning, the, the demo that we saw was a dev kit for, between Qualcomm and Razer, obviously not for sale yet. This is intended for developers as well as game uh, publishers. And the unit itself actually has a very good form factor, a 6.7 inch display, 1080p, 120 hertz, um, OLED panel, and of course giving us a 6,000 milliampere battery. Uh, the ability of actually outputting uh, over USB-C up to 4K 60 frames per second for better gaming experience. And that's how they demonstrated in here. They had them connected to projectors and we played there. The experience there is very nice, very mobile, and again, focusing on ele well, elevating the gaming or the mobile Android gaming experience from what we normally get from a smartphone to a dedicated gaming experience. So I hope we see that in more devices, or actually I hope we see this in the device that Razer releases later this year or even other OEMs. The last thing we're gonna talk about obviously is some of the improvements in Snapdragon sound. I'm not glossing over the HCX, the, uh, the, uh, you know, the uh, always on connected computing. Um, as you probably already know, we don't really cover a lot of that on the channel, but the main improvement here obviously is the third generation, better connectivity, more uh, incorporated uh, you know, optimizations done. Uh, my biggest thing though at this point I'm still seeing obviously is we want Windows 11 to actually usher in a better implementation. Um, for what we see now from what we see Apple doing and what we see Qualcomm doing at this point is they're providing us the architecture and the base or basically the hardware capabilities to do the work that we want. But it's still sitting in on the software side on the Windows side because I feel like we're still having to deal with emulation, we're still having to deal with uh, compatibility, where on the Mac side at this point we're still seeing basically it's more of a, a you pick up, you use it like a regular MacBook. 
Once we reach that level with Windows, I feel like the HCX uh, platform is going to uh, obviously flourish and do even more. And I feel like that's the main benefit. Qualcomm is definitely laying in the groundwork, and as soon as we're able to get some of that optimization from Microsoft, it's definitely going to be a much better story. But jumping into the Qualcomm and the Aptex uh, lossless and audio, basically the Aptex, well, the Qualcomm sound uh, essentially is definitely a big focus here this year. They had quite a few demonstrations done for that. And that would have been basically my, my, my third thing, is the ability of getting or better enjoying audio from a Qualcomm powered device than what we've seen in the past. And what I'm talking about this here is obviously, um, basically CD quality, lossless audio transmission, Bluetooth LE technology, which they also demonstrated. Unfortunately, it's a little bit hard to show on video because again, it's Bluetooth audio, so it's more of an audio experience. But the ability of actually broadcasting from a single device supporting, uh, let's say the 8 Gen 1, with BLE and be able to actually broadcast to up to you know, as many Bluetooth enabled devices that support BLE. Um, they were using reference earbuds, which was a little bit different, so we didn't have a way of actually understanding what the technology is going to be. But at the end of the day, it does require that both the transmitter and the receiver have the hardware set to be bo uh, supporting BLE. And once you have that, you have the ability of sharing audio. Also, obviously, have uh, you know low power, better optimizations for uh, you know power consumption. So, so those are some of the big things they did there. AI noise removal, AI echo removal. Um, if you've ever been on a phone call where your microphone and your earpiece kind of connect with somebody else sitting next to you, and you start getting a feedback, there's some AI options built in there, as well as the ability of removing, like if this was going to be applied to this scene right now, all of the background noise around me would be removed and all you'd be able to hear is my voice. And that's how was the demo done in there. So I'm really excited to see what they do there. I want to see better audio codecs. I want to see a better audio experience. And I'm hoping that this helps companies releasing buds in 2022 to elevate that experience and give us better audio experience because the hardware is going to be able to do it and it's going to be basically at the end of the day dependent on what the hardware on the buds are going to give us. I hope you guys are as excited as I am about all of the announcements that were made and all of the other content that I pushed out for you guys this week. I'm very happy and very thankful that Qualcomm was able to allow me to be part of the show. So my hope is I'll be able to keep continuing the story and we start seeing some of the OEM implementations of the HN1 and what are those capabilities going to provide. Hit up that link, make sure you follow the channel so you can check out that other video that we'll be putting out a little bit later on as well, which is the gaming and benchmarking on the brand new HN1. Keep in mind those are reference devices, but it should be a pretty good indicator of how the improvements are going to be noticed, at least from those type of experiences that I care about the most, definitely on a, on a device from Qualcomm. This is TK. Thank you very much for the support. Like and subscribe as usual, and I'll see you in the next one.